Hello there, friends and family. Yeah, once again, snuck on in on. I'm gonna have to talk to Gracie about that. But uh, hey, so glad you could make it today. Yeah, cuz you walked in at a good time. Yeah, I've been promising you that they're amazing pool pork barbecue. But like always, there's a couple of three crucial steps to amazing, tantalizing, and tasty Southern pool pork barbecue. So hey, come on in. Pull up a chair in the dining room. Or, help me out. So hey, let's get right on to it. And hey, maybe we can sing some Christmas carols too. When we're done. So y'all, like always, you're gonna need a few things. You know, I always say that at the start of anything. And primarily, you're gonna need some spices. And I know, looks like a whole lot of things. Well, you're also gonna need a nice bowl measuring spoons yep I measure that's the engineering cook in me and a whisk yeah so what do we got here well as always we got our black pepper pure ground it is then we've got our chili powder then we've got our cayenne pepper cumin Ground cinnamon. Yep. It's one of my special ingredients. Trust me on that. Onion powder. Garlic powder. Italian seasoning. Oh, yeah. Paprika. And while we're on the subject of Italian seasoning, just so you can tell, this has got 14 herbs and spices in it, all total. That's because Italian season has marjoram, thyme, you know how much I love thyme, rosemary, which pairs excellent with pork, savory, sage, oregano, and basil. Multi-purpose there. Pour some salt, and then some brown sugar. I'm using light, Domino brand. You can use what you choose to use. So we got to put all this together in the proper amounts to put together my version of an amazing spice rub. Like I said, it pairs well with all pork. All types of pork roasts. You know, shoulder, Boston butt, you know, pork butt. Sprinkle it on some chops. Ribs. Oh, it's amazing on ribs. Yeah. One day I'll show you how I do my ribs. They are tasty. But we're getting this all ready. Because we're going to do some slow cooked pulled pork barbecue. Oh yeah. So this is the first step in the process. Is an amazing spice rub. So the first thing we got to add to it. Is going to be the pure ground black pepper. Yep. And we're going to put in a tablespoon. Yeah, you know how I like them pepper. Of course, we're going to be seasoning up some meat here. And like always, it really don't matter if it's a touch less or not. It ain't that crucial, okay? The second ingredient's going to be the cayenne pepper. Oh yeah, it's a must. And I would say one teaspoon, if you don't like it, so spicy. But I go with two. So it's one to two on that. Then we're going to have to put in our chili powder. Yep, right there. And for that, we're going to drop in two sort of level tablespoons. Don't be afraid of it. It'll be fine. And this seasons up a lot of meat, so it ain't gonna get you. 
Next up, we're going to be using cumin. Yeah, got to have that cumin flavor in your barbecue. Trust me. And here again, we're going to drop in two sort of kind of level tablespoons. Just like that. That's ground cumin. Right there. And, of course, we got to put in our garlic powder. And we're going to put this in just about one tablespoon. Woo! That's going to add some flavor, I'm telling you. To all of that, we're going to add in one tablespoon of onion powder. Now, you could sub some minced onion. But, I like the powdered form in this. Of all the ingredients, except for the herbs. Uh, Italian seasoning. So, there's a one tablespoon of onion powder. And then we're going to put in the paprika. Now, if you got that there smoked paprika, all the more better. So, we got to put in a pile of this paprika. We're going to put us in four tablespoons. You know, paprika isn't hot. It's just got that flavor. There's three. And this stuff's starting to all get up my nose, which has already been sniffling. There's four of your paprika. Next up is our Italian seasoning. With all that goodness in it. We're going to put us in a good tablespoon. Sort of kind of heaping. Don't be afraid of it. And for our last spice, we're going to be putting in the cinnamon. And I'm going to be putting in two level teaspoons. Just like that. And the last thing we got to throw in there before we drop in our sugar is two tablespoons of salt. You can use what level. I'm using, you know, old folk salt, iodized. You can use unidized Himalayan pink salt. Or you can use sea salt. Pickling salt works really good. So we got our two tablespoons in there. And then the last thing to go in a special rub, and I already have some here because it was hard. So I had to do some crushing with a mallet. Now brown sugar always tends to get hard. You know? We gotta put us in two to three tablespoons of brown sugar. Now you could sub honey but then it wouldn't be a dry rub would it and what does this brown sugar going to do well it's going to give it some sweetness ain't no doubt there's two and I'm just going to say that's the third like I said a little bit less a little bit more ain't gonna hurt so that's everything you need and you'll be able to smell it and if you can't smell each one of your spices and herbs then they're not fresh you need to chunk them go to your store or online get you some more then you can take a whisk I mean for years I used you know pork pork whisk which is a pork 
and you're just going to take that and just start whipping it up good. Yep. The more you whip, you know, get the lumps out, put some music on, and whip to the beat. You know, if you got some hard or crusty spices, because you live down in the deep south, where, you know, the humidity is always about 85-95%, you know, you can put those spices in a mortar and pedestal, and uh, grind them back up. As long as they're smelling strong, I'm going to tell you, this rub, you can smell the black pepper, the cayenne, the cumin, the Italian seasoning, oh yeah, paprika, and you just run it up on the sides there, and it'll start breaking it up, and you'll get some rotation going, some of that wrist action, don't be afraid, you ain't gonna ruin your spice. And once you're happy with them, ooh, that is smelling good. There you have it. The spice rubs all finished up right there. I mean, like I'm telling you, any type of pork, this is amazing. I even use it on chicken. And I have used it on beef. All three meats works fine but I especially made it for the pork been working on this thing now for the better part of the last 30 years starting to get to my nose so it's got medicinal purposes too if your nose is a little bit stopped up it'll take care of that problem yes sir it will so we got a rub all made up now we're all prepared to go to the next step in the process. See, my special pulled pork barbecue is actually a three-stage process. The first step starts with the rub. The second step is applying it to the pork butt, roast, ribs, whatever. And the third step is, of course, slow cooking it or you in a crock pot which is how I'm going to do it this time but I've done it in the oven slow roasting low temp long time you know just like crock pot except it's in the oven and the best most exceptional way is to put it on a smoker low and slow for 10 to 12 hours that's the ultimate but it's chilly. No, it's darn right. Getting cold. We're going to do it inside the house. Where we can stay all warm and cuddly. So let me get this all cleared up. And we'll go to the next stage of the process. Okay. Time for the butt. Pork butt, that is. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty one. Whew. Let me show it to you. See that right there? That's a fine pork Boston butt. Yeah. It's about three and a half pounds, 3.57 pounds. And we paid $1.40 a pound. Superfoods. I remember when we could have got them all day long. Regular price, 99 cents. Yeah, special. Be down 79 cents. But it is what it is here in 2021. That's what we're going to be using. We got enough rub here. I'm going to tell you, you can do anywhere from a six to eight pound shoulder roast or Boston butt. No problem. Won't be using it all. So what we're going to do, and I do got on some, uh, gloves because that rub 
has got cayenne pepper in it. And I'm going to be placing that pork roast right there on that tray for now. Yeah, you got some uh, wax paper on it. Well, you can use parchment paper. Let me throw this away. So, the only thing left to do is put some of this rub on it. Now, to keep me from contaminating my rub, because I know I'm not going to use it all tonight, and I'll save what remains, is I'm going to use a spoon, and I'm just going to take that and sprinkle it right on that roast. Yep. You're going to want to press it on in there. And all the little nooks and crannies. Yep. Just keep pressing it on in there. Get it on the sides. Yeah. Press hard. Massage it in to the Boston bud. Give it a little gentle. You know, any little cracks and crevices, get some of this on the sides, get it down in there good. Smelling good. Then, then want to flip it over some. Sort of kind of on its side. If it'll stand up there. Hopefully it will. And we're going to get this side all done up. Good coating on it. And press it on in. Open up those cracks and crevices. Hope you can see that. You'll know it once you get one of these. You'll see the little separations between the muscle different muscle groups and that and we're going to flip her again of course we're going to make a mess ain't no doubt make sure you get plenty in there. If there's any separations on the side, like you can see right there, where that meat separated a little bit between the muscle groups, give it a good press. Don't be scared. Put extra underneath those flaps of the muscle. Just like you see me doing there. Then I'm going to press it back down. And there's a little crevice right there too. Can't let that go unflavored. We'll just put a touch in there. And we're going to flip it again. On the fat side. Because we don't want any side not being flavored. Now this is on the tray. That's just sort of going to be lost. That'll be okay. Now you can take, like I'm probably going to do, well I know I'm going to do, you can take what's on the tray there and that. Take your butt smash it down on that tray just like that coat your ends give them a good press don't worry massaging this a little bit like we're doing just makes it happy don't make it tough this ain't hamburger. This is butt. 
system got a little flap there trying to get away from us now once you're happy that you got a nice adequate coating on it you see any thin places sprinkle a little more on there and before you make fun of me that I got gloves on you know must have soft hands well I'll be honest they ain't nice and tough like they used to be but then I've been out working trimming and pulling briars and stuff and I got some little scrapes and scratches that cayenne pepper get on in there and on them get on your fingernails you'll know about later on tonight so there we got all coating and we got oh, about half of our spice rub left which will go in a nice ziplock bag for the next time and what I'll do with this on the tray is I'll take it and pour it off in another ziplock and since it has been contaminated by pork it'll go in the freezer because I've showed you with your different uh, batter mixes and that I use for frying if I got any left I pour them in a bag stick them in the freezer for next time or I can use them for gravy or battering up some chicken tenders whatever as long as you freeze it ain't nothing gonna grow so now all we gotta do is the last crucial step or we put this to sleep for the night in the refridge. Let me clean up. So now we're going to wrap it. Now you could put it in a Ziploc bag. I don't no more. Because I think it works a whole lot better if you wrap it in plastic wrap. So just stretch that out on your counter. Take this little slider. Cut right off. Try to keep your plastic wrap nice and flat. Now, I, I always have problems with that. And then we're going to take our pork butt. Ease it over here on it. Slap it down. Try not to knock off a lot of your rub. And then we're going to wrap it up tightly. You can get it in this plastic wrap. Push it down on there. Stretch it up over it. Yeah. Make sure you bring your ends up. This is important. I'll explain in a minute once I get it handled. We're almost there. Hold on. Because I put two layers on mine. Shove that over there. Stretch some more out. Try to keep it flat as possible. Cut it with that nice little cutter on our seal wrap. I love that stuff. And now we're going to take it the opposite way. Right like this. And bring it up over very tightly. Run it over here. Bring it up tight. Get it again. Seal up the ends even though we went the other way. So right now it is totally sealed up. In plastic wrap. 
Now, that's going to hold those spices onto your roast rather than putting it in a Ziploc bag. Because what's going to happen? We got salt in that there brine, uh, in that dry rub. And actually, in the culinary world, this is called dry brining. Yeah, because of the salt. There was two tablespoons of salt in there. What that salt does is it loosens up the muscle fibers and allows that seasoning and salt to some extent to penetrate between the muscle fibers and individual muscle groups. Just like wet brining with a salt brine, which if you've never done that, that's excellent for pork and poultry. But I found it to make my pork saltier than what I want. So many years back I switched to dry brine and that with a dry spice rub. And you can look all that up. I'm going to take old Miss Tom's word for it. But she's all happy now. We're going to get a plate and put it under it. Got to have one that's big enough to put under it. And the reason I do that, now I made sure my seams, when I put it all together, were on the top. I've not always done that. And they've been at the bottom. And when I've done it this way, I didn't have nothing under it, put it in the fridge. And of course, is that salt also causes to draw a little moisture out of the meat. And that then made a mess in the fridge. So I learned from my mistake. And I'm telling you about it so you won't make that mistake. Now, yeah, you could go ahead and slip it in a Ziploc bag down if you want that extra protection. But I'm going to put it on plate. And I'm not going to waste a Ziploc. But there it is, all wrapped up, ready to go to bed for the evening in the refrigerator. And it'll be in there for, let's see, right at about, oh, well, I would say 10 hours. Now, the important part to know is you don't want to brine it, dry brine it any longer than 24 hours and it's recommended no less than 8 maximum 24 I try to hit the sweet spot around 10 to 12 so we're going to just stick it in the fridge overnight and then we'll unwrap it get that crock pot ready and get her to cook it So there you have it. The pork butt is all tucked in, ready to go nine out in the fridge. We'll see y'all back in the morning, okay? Oh, well, good morning, friends and family. Through the magic of YouTube, we're back here in the country kitchen, as you can see. And it's early morning, too. And we've taken out that fine Boston butt, you know, pork butt that we've had all wrapped up dry brining in the refrigerator let her come up a little bit let her get comfy back at room temperature we've got our crock pot over here my old one had it 45 plus years sprayed up and preheating that's important and now you might wonder what these potatoes are right here see so we're going to have potatoes with the pork roast? Well, not really. You see, if you put the pork roast down in there, right slap on the bottom of your crock pot, part of that pork roast over time is not going to be slow roasting in the crock pot. It's going to be submerged in meat juice, yeah, water. It's going to be sort of kind of boiling. And I don't want boiled roast. 
I want slow cooked, roasted pork butt. So I make some fine pulled pork. So what I do, and I, I make little racks to go in these, but they're not very high, is I get some taters, some small ones, sort of become artificial. And these were getting just a tad on the softer side. And I'm just going to place them in the bottom of my crock pot to hold that roast up. You might call that a pro tip. Yep, yeah, you could use carrots, onions, rutabagas, or turnips if you want to. But potatoes are the cheapest of all of that. So we're going to sacrifice these three little buddies. Well, not totally. They'll go out to compost pile after this is all done. Now I'm just going to place them down in the bottom of the crock pot. Sort of, kind of. You know. And they're going to hold up our roast. Next, what we got to do is we've got to try to get this thing unwrapped, don't we? See, this is the easy part. We've done all the hard part. Of course, none of this has been hard. Woo. Oh, yeah. She's smelling fine. So, now we got to get it in the crock pot. And, of course, Gracie's here to try to mooch some food. Here again. And you'll find out now Instead of that rub being nice and dry, dry, it's all really moist. And we're just going to take that thing, and we're just going to sort of bend it in half, and stuff it down in there. Yep, I'll show you when I'm done. Because it ain't going to be all that long before, as always, that their pork butt's going to shrink up some. It's going to relax. And get all comfy. So, let me wash up my hands. Toss away the saran wrap here. And I'll bring you over and show you what we got. So hold on. Gracie, you've had breakfast. Kitty Cruz got breakfast. You got breakfast. It'll be okay. This ain't ready for kids. And in fact, can't eat it anyway. Probably used on your own powder. Garlic powder. It's not safe for kids. I'll make you up some if you're if you're good. You and the kitty crew can have some hamburger meat tonight. How about that? So let me get y'all bring you over here to the crock pot. We just sort of folded it up in half. Stuck her down in there. Just that simple. We take their lid on it. Slap the lid on. Scooch it back on the counter there a little bit in case Gracie gets frisky. Though that thing probably weighs twice as much as she does. Just a precaution. She's bad to jump on almost anything. So now it's just let her slow cook for the next 10 to 12 hours. We'll probably check it at 10. See how it's doing. If it's starting to fall all apart, that's going to be just right. And secondary effect of this Cooking in the slow cooker, it's going to fill this house with an amazing aroma. Surely it is. Oh, well, I see the timer's beeping away. Well, it's been 10 hours on low. So we're going to look on in here in it. Ooh, hard to see, I know. Let me get some light over here on the subject. There we go. Now you can see it. Yep. Ooh, it's smelling good too. So now we got to get it on out of the crock pot. 
And I'm going to be transferring it to this nice, big stainless steel bowl. And we'll let that meat rest a while. Let it cool down just some so we can handle it. And then we're going to start pulling it apart. So, now all we got to do, after we let it rest a bit, about 30 minutes, let it cool down some, I've got two forks. And I'm just going to take them forks and go on in there and start pulling it apart. It ain't hard. Just pull apart in big uh, chunks or shreds as you want it. Now, personally, I don't like to uh, shred it all up real fine. If you see a little big glob of fat, pull that on out of there. I mean, now if you like the fat, Leave it in there. And boy, this is juicy. You ain't gonna worry about it being all dried out like some of that. Or like, you know, when sometimes you do it in the smoker. I'm sure we've all had pulled pork or shredded pork, as it's sometimes known, before. Sneak out some fat right there. I don't personally want that fat. I'm going to stick it over here, where the taters was. Ooh, there's a whole pile of fat. Now you can leave, like I said, as much of that fat in it. Or take out as much as you want. Yeah, you're going to take a little meat out with it. That'll be okay too. And if you want, and I've done it too, you can just get your hands on in here once it's nice and cool. A lot of places do it that way. And I'll be the first to admit, I have done it that way too get my hands on it. make it happen I hope you're getting an idea here of what we got going on and this was cooked in that slow cooker for 10 hours but there's a caveat there cooking time and this is where people mess up they follow a recipe that somebody tells them eight hours on low 10 whatever and they do it and theirs ain't quite done or theirs is overcooked mmm that's good now you might wonder if that's happened to you a time or two what took place there well it all depends on the size of your pork butt no offense man because the bigger the piece of meat the longer it's going to take once you just step back and think about it a bit you'll understand and realize that's totally true like I say take your time Go through here. You don't want none of that fat in it. Then it's up to you. Get it on out. Now if you want to go back through the fat that you put inside and pick off all the little strands of meat, <laughs> that's up to you too. Then you know once you turn the camera off and y'all headed on down the road your way. I won't lie to you. I might do that to you. And then because we had the spices on the outside of this amazing pool pork, we're going to make sure we take these uh, forks and mix everything up. 
So we redistribute all that goodness. Can you see it right there? Yep. That's the finished product. Let me bring it over here in the lights. So put a little more light on the subject. I apologize for the lighting in my country kitchen. Yep. You gotta understand. It was built in 1940. And that's where I leave it. That's got my special spice rub blend on it. Now, if you want to add a little bit of your favorite barbecue sauce, Sweet Baby Ray's, Big Bob Gibson here in Alabama, Kraft, or whatever, my suggestion would be add a little, mix it all up, taste it, add a little more until you're happy. If you want to add a little bit of tang, more so, you know, more vinegary. You can sprinkle a little vinegar in, mix it up, taste, and add it till you get that tang just right. Or sprinkle a little more Worcestershire sheer sauce on it. Now, I'll say this. Right now, that paprika we put in that spice rub gives it just a touch of smoky flavor. It does. Even though it wasn't smoked paprika, because that's just what paprika does. It's got just a touch of spice and heat. Now, I don't mean anything uncomfortable. Just a touch. Just a warmth. And just a touch of sweetness. Yep. Now, I do make up special barbecue sauce. It's Alabama barbecue sauce. And it's special here in the state of Alabama and I've even made it special but it's getting late tonight and you just have to wait to see that on another video now what I'm gonna do is get me a bun make me a barbecue sandwich and if you remember my coleslaw from a video or two back I'll be putting that on that sandwich too and then we'll come back and do a taste test well, the only thing left to do is build a sandwich in our little bitty hamburger buns. Put some of that pulled pork on there. Don't be bashful. Put as much as you want. Pile it on up. Of course, these little tiny buns are the store brand. Everything's got smaller. Here in 2021, some of that there shrink inflation, I believe we call it. Then what I like to do is I like to put me some dill pickles on it. Yeah. Got to have them. Some of those there hamburger deals. And then... We need to top it with some of my coleslaw. Just happen to have a little bit left. Thankfully. We're just going to top that on there. Just like that. Now, you could have went ahead and uh, put you a little bit of your favorite barbecue sauce. Or, as I'll be showing you too, some of my special Alabama red vinegar barbecue sauce we'll place a little bun on there give it a good smash like that okay now we just got to try it so as always we got to do a taste test and that's what we're going to do right here Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. The only way that could be better if I'd went ahead and made up my sauce. Like I said, it's getting late. I'm getting hungry. I still got a kitchen cleaned up. 
like I said, it's got some smokiness from that paprika. Just a touch of heat and spice from the cayenne. Yeah. And a subtle hint of sweetness. And I don't think you could do much better in a crock pot. Woo! But you can use that spicer. Take it out, slow cook it on your grill. Or, for the best, the ultimate, slow cooked in a smoker. Low and slow. Yep, for about 12 or so hours. Here again, that all depends on the size of the Boston butt or the pork shoulder that you're preparing. So, y'all, until I, Gracie, which I think is in bed by now, and the Kita crew, see you on the next video. Y'all take care. Stay safe out there. And God bless each and every one of you. As you bless others. Till next time. Goodbye for now. Ooh, that's good. Oh, I got a whole kitchen to clean up. But I'm going to eat me at least one. If not two, at least pulled pork sandwiches. Then I'll clean up. And as always. We do it from our hand-written recipes, complete with additions as we went over time.